Hi everyone, Hypno Heather here. And today I'm going to go through some of the FAQs that really will help to break the myths and misconceptions of hypnosis. Because some of you may have been following me and noticing I am posting a lot about hypnotherapy and hypnotherapy training and how it can really help you overcome the traumas and the patterns that you learned as a result of being a human being growing up in life. <laughs> but sometimes, because for me, I do this every day. I've done this every day since 2011. I forget that there still are often a lot of questions about what is hypnosis? Can you get stuck in hypnosis? Is it sleep? What if you can't be hypnotized? How will you know if you're in hypnosis? Will you remember? Would you do something you wouldn't be okay with? So these are a few things I'm going to visit in this video for you now. One, can you get stuck in hypnosis? No, it is impossible. That would be like saying that you could get stuck while daydreaming in class or at work or anywhere. You know, anytime that your mind kind of drifts off or while driving, even in the driver training manual, it says watch out for drivers as they might be in hypnosis. So you can't get stuck. It's a natural state. It's like going into daydream and coming out. There are shows like The Simpsons where Homer's stuck in hypnosis all week and they can't find the hypnotist so he can't get out. That starts to create some of these myths about hypnosis, but this is not true. Number two is hypnosis sleep. No. And oftentimes when people do go into hypnosis, they question it or they doubt it because they don't understand that you don't go unconscious. Like you're, you are aware, your mind does still think thoughts. Now it might drift in and out of thought. And then of course, the more that you do, the deeper you go. So sometimes when you've done hypnosis a lot, you might find that you don't really fully, uh, you're not fully aware, like it feels more sleepy, but that is not in fact um, the experience of hypnosis. You know, a light state of hypnosis, which is basically a relaxed body and um, bypassing the critical factor, which is just, again, having that part of our mind, the receptive part of our mind listening can create most changes in hypnosis. Number three, would I do something out of hip, would I do something in hypnosis that I wouldn't be okay with doing out of hypnosis? Now this is, yeah, we got to address this because this is the myth that stage hypnotism kind of really makes seem true. Like if you saw someone hypnotize on stage to do things that they would not normally do, you think, oh my gosh, I'm never being hypnotized ever. But the fact is, is that hypnosis and even stage hypnosis is a participatory event. So actually, in actuality, nobody would ever do something in hypnosis that they wouldn't do out of it. It might help them relax more. It might help release their inhibitions a bit. But ultimately, stage hypnosis is a great way to be like, I would never do that in real life. So it's like an excuse, right, for people to let go, let loose, be free. Uh, so yeah, like our morals and ethics are still there. If you're in hypnosis and I say, okay, when you come to, you're going to give me $1 million. You wouldn't just wake up and go to the bank <laughs> or rob the bank <laughs> to give me it. And we can see this is true because if this was true, because of how easy it is to hypnotize someone, then if that was true, then so many people would be committing crimes against their will for other people. So what else? Um, what if you can't be hypnotized? This is a concern that I do hear a lot that honestly, for me, after all these years and sessions is not ever a concern. Everyone can be hypnotized to some degree. And again, we really only need light hypnosis to do most changes in hypnosis. Um, yeah, so the only person you know, of kind of, of like, of like 
sound sound mental capacity um, that ca can be hypnotized is really the person that doesn't want to be, that doesn't want to participate. It's far more about you coming into it with a willingness to participate and try and follow rather than whether you can or can't be. And this happens a lot where people will go, will say like, oh, I went on stage and I got sent back down so I can't be hypnotized. But this is not true. It just means maybe you can be hypnotized very fast in a very authoritative way, which is stage hypnosis, or that you don't really want to be hypnotized to do funny things in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> So in a clinical setting, it's very different and the motivation is different because if all you have to do is go into hypnosis, which is just following my prompts, like in a moment, I'll get you to open and close your eyes. And when you close your eyes, you'll go deeper relaxed. So if you want the change that will come from hypnosis, in a clinical setting, there's so much more of a willingness than in a social setting where you might not want to go up in front of all your workmates and do things. <laughs> um, and also, again, there is this permissive and authoritative way that we can hypnotize and not everybody works with a very commanding sleep or very commanding and go deeper. There's permissive ways that we can talk to and this I def all of this we go over in the training because this is how you learn to talk about hypnosis to help um, relax the fears and break them down for people that might be that the only thing really stopping them from getting the change that they want is their hesitation or misunderstanding about what is hypnosis. And uh, what else we have here? What it will I know if I did go into hypnosis? Again, this is tricky because the more you do, the deeper you go. And I use uh, supplemental audios to help create this depth faster. So if you listen to me in between our sessions, you're going to go deeper in your next session. And so like you, sometimes I think that like we as hypnotists, and this is something I train all my students is how to talk to people about their hypno experience, because it might seem to you like nothing changed, even though you were potentially so relaxed and didn't move for like 20 or 30 minutes. Like when are you ever awake? Like just imagine yourself awake in a chair and not moving so relaxed for 20 or 30 minutes <laughs> or more sometimes, right? So what happens is, is it's just that sometimes, again, there's a misconception that if you were in hypnosis, you would be out of it. You would be unconscious. Your brain wouldn't be working. You wouldn't have thoughts. And this is, again, a misconception because that is actually being unconscious or sleeping. And remember, hypnosis is not sleep. It's just a slightly relaxed, heightened, well, sometimes it's very relaxed, heightened state of awareness. And, <clears throat> you know, sometimes when people ask me about getting stuck in hypnosis, I say like, everyone who's ever had hypnosis, we all wish we could stay stuck in hypnosis. This is not a fear. This is a true desire. It feels so amazing. It's so relaxing. We wish we could get stuck in hypnosis. Um, so I'll leave it at that. I'll come on and there's always more questions. And if there are questions that I didn't answer for you today, you can just pop it into the chat. Um, you know, ask some questions in the comments. And if you're wanting to learn even more, uh, I'm going to do a webinar on November 3rd, so Tuesday and next week. And I'm going to get in more in depth and share more. And then also talk about really um, how getting a, the, learning how to do this is not only helpful for yourself, because I'll definitely always teach all of my students self-hypnosis, but really helpful for you if you want to be able to guide other people into making these changes. And I'm going to end off by just listing off ways that hypnosis can help. 
weight loss, eating habits, food cravings, binging, emotional eating, portion sizes, fullness, late night eating, waking up in the middle of the night eating, thinking thin, key to getting the body you desire, stopping further weight gain, lose weight, motivation to exercise, stress and relaxation, worry, anxiety, worry about the future, triggers from the past, anxiety management, panic attacks, post-traumatic stress disorder, self-hypnosis, confidence building, trust building, mindset for less stress, up and down mood and energy cycles, sleep issues, relationship support, letting go of past relationships, getting through divorce and separation and growing through it, sexual dysfunction, trust issues, triggers from fear of commitment, fear of being alone, couples sessions, sexual performance anxiety, feeling worthy and deserving, open to a new relationship, saying true to self and current relationship, death of a loved one, jealousy, negative beliefs and attitudes, miscommunication, anger, resentment, hurt, obsessions, insecurities, negative self-talk, self-improvement, self-love, being hard on self, increased focus and follow through, motivation to exercise, creating routines, self-acceptance, forgiveness, letting go of the past, positive thinking, patience, inner critic and ego awareness, shyness, fear of public speaking, fear of flying, fear of any kind of insect or animal, fear of small spaces, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of, fear of, fear of everything, <laughs> body image, perfectionism, being too apologetic, peer pressure, victim mentality, healing the child within, trauma from the past, school success, studying success, crying uncontrollably, blocks to success, allowing abundance, sports improvement, sports injury recovery, create winning mentality. I could just keep going on and on. Illness and pain management and support, IBS, asthma, fibromyalgia, headaches, migraines, sleep issues, blood pressure, cancer and chemo grievances, nausea, chronic pain, medical test anxiety, fear of needles, fear of the dentist, feeling happier, follow a diet plan, pain relief, anorexia, bulimia, high cholesterol, blood pressure, fear of going to the doctor, fear of water, fear of aging, fear of death, fear of the dark, fear of heights, fear of authority, claustrophobia, fear of being alone, fear of rejection, fear of the worst, smoking cessation, TMJ jaw tension, teeth grinding, hoarding, problems with drugs and alcohol, gambling problems, overspending, hair and eyebrow pulling, cell phone, internet addiction, compulsive lying, skin picking, swearing, cursing problem, nail biting and picking, self-harming OCD. So that's like, I could go on and on. These are all things on my website that I have actually personally worked with hypnosis for. And so, yeah, if you want to learn more, uh, join me on Tuesday for the webinar and also check out the training coming up and uh, have a great day. Make it a great day. Ciao for now.